Hi guys. So today I got my um, Ford Explorer. I dropped it off at the Ford um, dealership. They have some uh, repairs done. And we'll talk about those in a different video later on. But um, they gave me a Lona car, which is really great of the, those guys to give me a Lona car. I uh, really appreciate that. And I did tell them that also because most places nowadays don't give you Lona cars anymore. Anyways, this Lona car is a 21 Ford Edge ST. So the sporty one of the whole ST bun, of the whole um, <laughs> Edge bunch. Definitely not of the SD group. We'll get to that too. Um, so let's look at it. I'm not an Edge fan, and um, not really. I don't really know much about the Edge either. So what I can tell you is that uh, this is the updated one with the facelift, and uh, it looks better than the old one uh, with the same generation, but the one without the um, facelift. The ST model has a little bit of a sportier sportier um, front here you see the uh, fog lights are nice definitely nicer than the regular um, edge then the headlights I turn them on so you guys can see them seem to be LEDs maybe they are HIDs still I don't know but I most Ford edges that I see drive around they have those old halogen yellowish ugly looking bulbs and like really dim uh, <laughs> it really sucks so these here seem to, they have improved these um, headlights on the Edge. So that's a good thing for uh, the new Ford Edge. Let's see what else we have. This one here, the price sticker is on it. It was about roughly 52,000. One of the options is this paint. It's like a metallic um, uh, white. I can't remember what they call it. Uh, we have some nice black rims. And since this is a Lona car, someone wasn't careful and hit the curb. Look at that, it's all, all full of curb rash all around. The other one too, the other side as well. Um, what else do we have? We have this roof here that opens. And if you watch my videos, you know that I don't like these. I would never buy never buy one, never pay for one. I have it on the Explorer because it came with it. But look at this big ugly thing sticking out there I, I don't like it but whatever some people love it and um, yeah that's fine so let's look at the rear of the Ford Edge change to the lights are different the LED lights just like the old one uh, we have an SD badge and then we have these uh, this the bumper looks different and the exhaust tips look way bigger too and there you can see the real deal right behind it there's the real exhaust there um, it just looks a little more sporty and um, yeah they did a good job it looks okay I don't mind it it looks like the side here of the tail lights is the same as the um, model before before the facelift and there's some condensation in here you can see that which this is a brand new vehicle 2,000 miles I surprised there's condensation in there but maybe it was parked for a while and that is why the color is actually pretty nice can you see that well, it's actually pretty pretty good so I like that so yeah that's the Ford Edge new model ST I'll put in uh, the video how many horsepower it makes because it has more horsepower than the normal Edge and uh, it's supposed to be sporty and um, shift points are different too which you can definitely feel when you drive it but um, don't think this is a race car, it is not. I don't think it's that uh, much sportier. So let's have a look at, at the inside of the um, Ford Edge. We'll start with the, with the rear. Uh, the door panels, have some, some fake leather going on with white stitching. Look, make it look a little more sportier. Rear bench, looks okay, looks decent. Looks like there's plenty of room there. Here is the heated power outlets. So that's fine. No complaints here. Um, we don't have a um, sunscreen thing in here. So yeah, I thought they all had that by now, but my Ford Explorer has it. This one does not. So uh, no sun protection, but at least the glass is tinted. 
check the uh, hatch. Opens automatic. Here we go. First impression is there's plenty of room in here. Um, there's some floor mats. Looks like someone loaned it and transported some crap in it here. The subwoofer. Looks like there's a blind switch here. Probably buttons for. Oh no, look at that. It folds out and there's a little hook. A little plastic hook. Yeah, probably snap off. Well, that's good. Uh, what's this here? Lift, left. All right, let's try that. There we go. Oh, they don't come back up. You have to do that manually. All right, so it just releases them and they <laughs> go for They don't come back up. Well, that's a little silly, but that's fine. Spare tire. Brand new. Oh, there's something in here too. Looks like some dog food. Oh, there too. Yeah, looks like someone had some dog food in here or something. Well, rabbit food, I don't know what that is. Hmm. Well, these are good, so you can tie something down. Well, now it's stuck. Hold on. How about this? Okay, that's how you do it. You have to snap it over. Okay, as you can already tell, um, if you compare this to the Explorer, the Explorer is uh, made just, it's made more practical and it's just a better car. Um, nevertheless, this is a good vehicle, I think, and the room, if you want to have an escape and you want a little bit more room, this wouldn't be a bad choice. If you don't mind the um, outdated vehicle, it is. Close it. I'm gonna go ahead and get that seat back up. Take you along. There. This one. Yeah, see that's a little bit of a hassle there. But um, it's fine. A little bit like in the old days. So it reminds me of you know, speakers in the doors over here. Two of them. Alright. Jump in the front seat and um, I'll let you know what the interior looks like from the driver's view. All right, here we are. So let's look at the seats. Uh, the seats have an uh, SD uh, logo in them. They are like a kind of an Alcantara type of deal. I'm not sure what it is and supposed to be leather on the bolsters that, that does not look like real leather what do you think does that look like a leather it doesn't feel like leather but I don't know I'll have to do some research uh, they're definitely sportier seats with uh, wider bolsters and um, definitely uh, what Ford does here they want to look they want this to look sporty uh, we have white stitches plastics we don't have any wood it's plastic too Supposed to look like carbon fiber or something. This is actually a soft material. And on this side here, let's look at the plastic. Hard plastic, hard plastic. The mirrors don't fold, which surprises me. We have a typical Ford uh, light switch. And the steering wheel, at the first look, it looks like a typical Ford steering wheel. It's a little bit different though. It has the old style of buttons here. I'm not sure if you remember them. Uh, the um, steering wheel is it's leather stitched in kind of a white color and that's nice but it's a little thin a little thin look at that could be a little beefier it's a little thin there's a nice ST logo in it though pedals uh, metal gives it a nice touch start stop button here um, the gauge cluster is old if you know Ford, you know this one here, that style came out back in 2013, is that right? Anyways, it has a little uh, couple with features here. See that boost gauge, the turbo boost gauge there? I don't know, it doesn't do anything unless you drive it. It shows you how much boost you have, but honestly you don't need it for a vehicle like this. Um, there's the speed, let's see what we can scroll through here mile distance to empty oh there's your rpms yeah there we go 
and oh look now we have the water temperature and the fuel gauge we go one up we only have the fuel gauge why well, just leave the two the whole time it does not make sense and we have the tire pressure speed um, intelligent all-wheel drive and on the side by the way you can see the adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping assist which is good and I'm just gonna leave this this is I don't like this this is kind of a, a hassle here you look at that fuel economy 21.9 that's okay um, this is engine on to steering wheel maneuvering okay huh. uh, good I'm just gonna leave this on uh, the RPM display here on the other side is kind of useless too it's kind of a compass and the world we need that come can't get this so you guys can see it <laughs> uh, anyways there's a compass on there uh, which is odd and you can scroll I think you can go to to nothing you can go man there entertainment phone and navigation so pretty useless there but nevertheless um, someone might like it now the positive this here remember the old console with the old old-fashioned little screen the buttons that's gone so Ford put a nice big screen in here and it uh, looks good looks updated um, yeah I, I liked it at the first glance but then I found out if you want to turn your heated seats on or your steering wheel you have to touch this screen here. Let me demonstrate that. There, there's my seats. Now there's my steering wheel. I touch that to turn it all off. You want my yeah, it's gone. If I want it hotter, slide this up. Now it's a little warmer. In a medium or just one one um, level of heat. There. See, it's it's flimsy there. See? Um, same with the temperature you can set your temperature here it's set at 73 right now I can go down and slide yeah, the slider has gone again I can slide the slider down 71 72 if I want to and um, that's how I adjust my uh, heat and my my um, air conditioner all my settings basically everything goes through this screen yeah, as you can tell there's the radio Sirius XM uh, is running so see the highway pandora most thumped mm, okay um apple carplay i want to go through all this here you know that from other fords notes the interesting one you tap on notes and look at that you have a smiley on there and you can just use your fingers and paint or put a note on it why in the world do you need that i don't know <laughs> and yeah what else to be have here how do I get out of this this we have navigation Bluetooth and I think here when I click on the edge I'm getting into my phone my um, sorry my sound settings and my car settings there see. it is okay but it is just a little bit complicated I'm usually pretty good with that stuff but my Explorer is so much easier so much easier and so much um, more user oriented than this here. This is just weird. Like right now, I have that smiley there. How does, do I get that off? Um, I'm trying up that. I am drawing something here. Um, now what did I do now? Apple CarPlay? No, I didn't want that. There we go. I think I got the radio back on there. Okay. That's the radio. Radio's back on. Uh, let's see what happens if I push on this. Oh, let's see, that's your um, climate stuff here. Okay, max AC. If you want more more air by your head, or by your feet, yeah, it's gone again. Let's try it again. You can set um, you can set it right here, which is way too complicated. Just have a button, and it's way easier. And as you can see, there is no button. For all of this stuff here and there should be one there should be a button even the defrost is not there where's the defrost can someone see defrost uh, here it's right here but it's not on here so there's no defrost there so that's fine 
I like that they updated it. Looks a little better, but not this way. Now there's a little cubby here. Oh, look at that. You can put your phone in there and it will charge. So there's a little charging pad for your phone, which is good. There's a little um, afterthoughts. They put a USB plug in there. Uh, two of them to charge your phones, which is a nice idea too. It just doesn't look very good. Now this here, I'm not sure what that's for. And two cup holders and then this and some hard plastic, hard glossy plastic in. And uh, what is it? What's it for? I don't know. Okay, um, gear selector here, parking brake, little cubby here. It's, it's okay, it's deep enough. And then the glove box, which again looks like an older style glove box. And it does not have um, a very big manual in it. I tell you why because the manual is here inside this guy. That's where you have your manual. The roof is open right now. Let's close it. Oh, got stuck. No. What does it do now? Oh, I have to keep the. I have to keep my finger on the button or it will not shut. Okay. Now the curtain or whatever you call it, that cover. Is it coming? There it is. Okay, so if I let my finger go, it stops. I don't like that. Okay, I'm gonna keep my finger on that button there or it will just stop. So, no, that's that's not good. I mean, my Explorer has the same stuff, but um, it works better and you don't have to keep your finger on the button. Uh, maybe I do it wrong. That's possible too, so. Uh, it's possible I just do it wrong. Okay, I think we are through. Let's open the window. One more thing to show. The horn. This horn does sound horrible for nice larger um, crossover SUV. Does that sound bad? It does. Okay, um, I'm gonna film the uh, vehicle from outside so you can hear the sound. And so here's my final conclusion. Let's start with what I like. Uh, what I like is this engine here. It's the 2.7 liter twin turbo from the um, EcoBoost, not from the that they also use in the uh, F-150. I think that was my thought there. Um, anyways, this engine is um, is a pretty good engine, and um, it, it fits the vehicle well. The performance is not as sporty as you might think, but it um, picks up quickly and um, it feels fast so i would say i do like this engine um, what else do i like i like the new sync system the bigger screen all in all it's a pretty good system and uh, it's very responsive so i do like that i like that the hood has um, some lifters on both sides a lot of cars don't have that anymore and um, I do appreciate that on this Ford Edge. Um, as you can tell, I'm trying to find the positive and things that I like. Um, I think that was about it. No, I also like that it generally has a quiet ride and that the suspension is well tuned. I mean, you can go around the corners, I think, quicker than in a normal uh, Ford Explorer. Now the Ford Explorer ST is a different story, but it's better than the normal um, Ford Explorer. So suspension is good, a little harsher, a little rougher ride, but if you like to drive a little more uh, spirited, it's uh, well worth the money. Anyways, uh, what do I not like? First this one here, there's no insulation under the hood. <laughs> I think that just looks cheap and for the price you pay for this, that shouldn't happen. Same with the engine, it doesn't even have a cover, but I don't care as much about the cover. I don't like the overall style of the vehicle, it's very dated. You can tell that this has been out for quite a while. So that's something I do not like about it. I do not like that they um, added that nice big touch screen, but removed all the buttons. So if you wanna recirculate your air, you have to go into the menu and find it in the sync system, which is a little bit of a hassle if you don't know uh, what you need, where you find it. 
or if you're in traffic and um, you just have to focus on traffic and same time look at the screen it's not a safe uh, it's not ideal it's worded like that what else um, I think the price is too high almost fifty three thousand dollars is a little bit steep for this type of vehicle so that's um, just my opinion other than that I think there's nothing that I really don't like about it it's mostly the styling um, the um, dashboard you know it's dated just looks dated um, the materials everything feels a little cheap a little plasticky uh, it, it's, it's just not a not what I would expect for a new SUV right now so yeah there's a lot of little things that I don't like you know there's nothing major that I really hate but um, all the little things together would make me not want to buy this as a new vehicle now for someone who doesn't care about the styling and just wants a quiet ride or wants the ST model because it's it's a little more powerful yeah sure go ahead and buy it it's probably not a not a bad vehicle I don't think it's a bad vehicle anyways um, that was it so short review of the um, Ford Edge ST one more thing there are two cameras in this vehicle one for the rear one for the front the front one is right here underneath the logo um, the, the rear camera is really not good, bad quality, and I don't know why because all of my a lot of vehicles have a good quality um, camera, like the Escape picture is pretty good. The other vehicles too. Um, the front camera, although on this Edge here, is great. Same standard as on the other Fords. The rear camera on this Edge is just a very low camera, uh, very, very low quality camera like the resolution is just dim and uh, grainy so I want to mention that I'm not sure if it's just this vehicle or if all of them have this uh, this issue